Hi, this is Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 15, called the Volume of a Cone. So we're going to explore cones and their volumes, all right? All right, so it says, first of all, number one, which figure has a larger volume? And so looking at those, just by looking at it, which one do you think would take up more space? Which one would fill up more space there? And probably you would say the cylinder seems to be a little bit bigger. And if you were to fill them both with water, there's more space for the water to go inside of there. So the question then is, do you think the volume of the smaller one is more or less than half the volume of the larger one? And explain your reasoning. So, do you think this is more or less than half the volume of that one? And you want to have a little conversation with your classmates about, well, how much less uh, volume space does this take than that one? And what do you think? Why do you think it's more or less than half? Um, that's up to you to kind of figure that out and have a conversation about it. And we'll talk about what the actual dimensions are in a bit. Here's a method for quickly drawing and sketching a cone. The first thing you want to do is draw an oval, okay, like so. I don't know why there's two ovals drawn, but there it is. Oh, that's the point. Then draw a point centered above the oval, so you draw a point up there. And then you connect the edges. So draw the oval, draw a point above, connect the edges, shoop and shoop. And which parts you're drawing would be hidden behind the object? Make these parts dashed. So probably, um, well, maybe if you had a, a height inside, you wouldn't see it. You might not see the backside of the uh, of the circle there. Depends on what you want to do. So again, you just draw an oval. You pick a point right beneath it or above it in the middle, and then you connect your dots there to make the oval there. So that's what you have there. If you want to label it like it says here, you label it with a radius on the base and you label the height going up there something along those lines. So you can make that um, either going up or down, up to you. It really doesn't matter too much there. Okay, from cylinders to cones. Now hopefully in class um, your teacher took you on a little journey to watch one of these cones and to see how they were similar. All right, if they didn't, you could check out a little Vimeo, which is a little video on vimeo.com slash 19652045. I hope that's right there. And you can watch a nice little video that shows you the difference between a cone and a cone and a cylinder's volume and how that works out a little bit there. So kind of a cool um, reenaction for you to take a look at there. Hopefully you did in your class there. The idea being when you watch that, you learn that it takes three cones to equal one cylinder. And the same way it takes, or we could say, or about one third of a cylinder equals one cone, okay? So if I took three of these guys here, I could fill them up with water and pour them into the cylinder and it would be equal or be equivalent there. Or I could take this cone and I a cylinder and I can cut it in a half, or a third, sorry, I keep saying the wrong thing. And I, if I just took one third of those out, that would be equivalent to what would fit inside that space there. All right? So that works if they have congruent bases, okay, and they're a congruent circle there. So if the volume of the cylinder is 90 centimeters cubed, what is the volume of the cone? What we just said was that the cone is one third of the volume of the cylinder. So it's one third of the volume of the cylinder. Volume of the cylinder is 90, so one third of 90 is gonna be equal to 30 centimeters cubed. If it says the volume of the cone is 120 centimeters cubed, what's the volume of the cylinder? Well, you take three times the volume of a cone to find the volume of a cylinder. So three times 120 is 360, and we're still using centimeters cubed. If the volume of the cylinder is volume equals pi r squared h, what is the volume of the cone? Well, the cone is gonna be one third of the volume of the cylinder. So the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h, and so we're taking that and we're multiplying it by one third to find the volume of the cone. So that becomes our, our formula or our equation for the volume of the cone because the volume is equal to one third of the volume. All right, so we're gonna use that for the remaining questions here. 
Here's a cylinder and cone that have the same height and same base. What is the volume of each figure? Express your answer in terms of pi. So first of all, starting with the cylinder right here, the cylinder, the cylinder has a volume equal to pi r squared. If it has a diameter of 10, then we know that the radius equals half of that, which is five. Oops, sorry, times the height, I forgot that part there. So we're gonna say that it's gonna be equal to pi times five squared times the height, which is four. So five squared is 25 times four. 25 times four is 100. So the, air, the volume of the cylinder is 100 pi. Now that's just in terms of pi and we'll leave it like that. For the cone though, you're gonna take that same volume, the volume's gonna equal and it's gonna be one third of the volume of the cylinder. I don't need to figure that all out again, I've already done it once. So it's one third times the volume of a cylinder, 100 pi. So that's gonna be equal to 100 over three times pi. And I don't need to do much more with it than that. I can leave it just like that and be fine, okay? If you wanted to approximate it, you could say, well, this is a little more than 3.1, right? That's three, those almost would cancel out, which means you probably get a value a little bit, or close to um, 100, right? A little bit more up here, so a little more than 100. So not much more than that. On this next one, it says here's a cone. What is the area of the base? And express your answer in terms of pi. Okay, well the area of the base is gonna be pi times the radius squared. The radius is six, so that's gonna be 36 pi. That's the area of the base, right? What's the volume of the cone? Well, the volume of the cone is gonna be the area of the base, pi, which is 36 pi, times the height, which is gonna be eight, but it's also gonna be only one third of the volume of a normal, of a normal um, cylinder, right? That's how you find the volume of a cylinder. You wanna multiply it by a, by a third. So for me, what I did first, I did one third of 36. One third of 36 is 12. So that's 12 pi times eight. And then I did 12 times eight, which is 96. And I left it with pi here. And then it's gonna be some corner sort of units cubed. They didn't tell us what it was. So we'll leave it as units cubed. So again, using the formula, one third uh, pi radius squared times eight. The height works out to be 96 pi units to the third. Number three, a cone-shaped popcorn cup has a radius of five centimeters and a height of nine centimeters. How many cubic centimeters of popcorn can the cup hold? And use 3.14 as an approximation of pi to give a numerical answer. So we could draw a quick sketch here. Here I have a cone that holds some popcorn in it. It has a radius, it says, of five, and it has a height, it says, of nine. All right, so our volume equation is gonna be one-third times pi, which is 3.14, times the radius, five squared, times the height, which is nine. So now I just have a large computation problem, right? So one-third times 3.14 times 25 times nine. I'm gonna go ahead and do one third times nine. That reduces down to a three, right? So I can cross this out and write a three instead. And three times 25 is 75. So 75 times 3.14 is gonna be my solution. And 3.14 times 75 is gonna be equal to 235.5 centimeters cubed. All right, and that's really the, the longest way you can do it, but it does work out to get you the volume of the cylinder. All right, let's take a quick look at our summary before we start on today's homework there. I'm gonna skip the are you ready for more, although it's a great question. And it's a great question because you have two parts here, don't you? You have a cylinder up on top, and then you have a cone down here on the bottom. And so really this is a great question. You'll see lots of these where you have multiple parts. You just put them back together in order to solve that one. So I would recommend you do that. I'm just gonna skip it for now for sake of time on my part. 
So here we go. If a cone and cylinder have the same base and the same height, then the volume of the cone is one third the volume of the cylinder. All right, and that's the big takeaway from the day. So the cone works like this. It's one third pi r squared times h. So take a moment to work on your homework and then we'll come back together and check it out. All right, so here's today's homework. Number one, it says a cylinder and cone of the same height and radius. The height of each is five centimeters, that's our height, and the radius is two centimeters. Calculate the volume of the cylinder and the cone. All right, so two problems. So first, the cylinder. Cylinder is pi r squared h, right? We know we have pi, the radius is two squared, and the height is gonna be five. Two squared is four, and so four times five is 20. So we'd say 20 pi for the volume of the cylinder. And it would really be 20 pi centimeters cubed. For the cone, it's simply gonna be one third of the volume of the cylinder, 20 pi centimeters cubed. So I can just start with just that because I already found that, I can plug that in there. So I could rewrite this as 1 third times 20 is 20 over 3 pi centimeters cubed. So once you find one, it's pretty easy to plug it in for the other one. Number two, the volume of this cone is 36 pi cubic units. What is the volume of a cylinder that has the same base area and the same height? So if I know that this is going to be 36 pi, for the volume of the cone. The cone is gonna be, remember it took, we said before, it takes three cones to equal one cylinder. So if the volume of the cone is 36, what's the volume of a cylinder? It'll be 36 pi times three, because it takes three of them to get to be a cylinder. 36 times three is 108 pi and that's still going to be cubic units, whatever that means, all right? So centimeters, feet, it is to, to say cubic units. So that one is not quite as scary as it looks, right? You just have to know that volume of a cone is one third. So when I do a cylinder, I'm just multiplying by three. A cylinder has a diameter of six centimeters, all right? And a volume of 36 pi centimeters uh, cubed. Sketch the cylinder. So here's our circle. Here's our cylinder, something like this. It has a diameter, which means a cross, of six centimeters. And we know the whole volume happens to be 36 pi. Find the height and radius in centimeters. Well, first of all, the radius is going to be half of the diameter. So since we had six, half of that's going to be three. Now, in terms of the height, because I have the volume, I know the volume equals pi times the radius squared times the height. So in our case here, three squared is gonna be nine. Well, there's a couple things. Let's start with the volume. It's 36 pi. That's equal to pi times nine times h. And if I divide both sides by nine pi, 36 divided by nine is four. And so that means our height is gonna be equal to four. So we have a radius of three and a height of four. Label your sketch with the cylinder's height and radius. Okay, so we could do a line this way for our height and call that four. And we could do a radius here and call that three. All right, the next one. Lynn wants to get some custom t-shirts printed for a basketball team. Shirts cost $10 each if you order 10 or fewer and $9 if you order 11 or more shirts. Make a graph that shows the total cost of buying shirts for zero to 15 shirts. All right, so I don't have a lot of space on mine. They would look something like this, right? And so let's just say that you're buying shirts and we have, we know when you buy 10, they're gonna cost you $9 each. So we can go out to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. 
And so there's going to be a very constant price here as you buy each one of these shirts. Okay, so it'll be a nice straight line. Why is it a straight line? Because it's a constant price. Each time I, I buy one, I'm going up, in this case here, $10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, right? Um, all the way up. So I'm going up by $10. Now, when I buy the 11th shirt, 11 shirt, I'm going to then, what happens here at 11 shirts, is it changes quite a bit there. So when I buy 10, I'm doing $9 a piece. When I get to the 10th next shirt, number shirt number 10, my price is going to go up, but it's not going to go up quite like what it did before, right? Um, what happens then is, is I'm going to be at for number 10, or number 11, I should say. Okay, we're going to be kind of flatline it for a second, and then we're going to start going back up again. Okay, so kind of hard to show on my little graph here. Sorry, it looks a little bit like if it was linear, it'd be like this, this, and this, something along those lines there. So the question that comes up next is if there's 10 people on a team, do you save money if you buy an extra shirt? Think of it this way. If there are 10 people on the team and it costs $10 each, it's going to cost $100 for 10 people. If I bought 11 shirts and I only paid $9 each, that's going to cost us $99. So it's cheaper to buy one extra shirt because I get a, a little discount there and it's cheaper for the whole team. So it actually makes more sense to buy an extra shirt and save a dollar. So that's the answer to part B, which is over here. All right, C, what is the slope of the graph between zero and 10? So between zero and 10, that's the cost of the shirt. And between zero and $10, zero and 10, it's $10 each. So our slope there is going to be 10 over 1. So what does that mean? It means it costs $10 per shirt. Now between 11 and 15, that graph is a little bit different, not quite as steep, but still pretty steep. It's $9 to 1. That means it costs $9 per shirt. Okay, and that's what the slope means there. And finally, number five, it says in the following graphs, a horizontal axis represents time. So this is all time, time, and time. And the vertical represents, dis represents distance from school. Distance from school. Write a story for each graph. So the idea being that this is school down here, school here, and school here. So in the first one, a possible story could be that you know Sally left school at a constant rate and started walking maybe she's going home and now on her way home she stopped at a park and just hung out at the park maybe did some homework or watched squirrels um, just play in the trees I don't know so Sally walked away from school at a constant rate took a little rest at the park and didn't go anywhere and then continued on her super long journey home at about the same rate she left school there here we have uh, Johnny, and Johnny's here at school, and he leaves school, and he starts to, maybe he's going a little faster, he's running home, and he starts to get home, and when he gets home, he stops, and he empties out his backpack, he looks at his homework, he forgets, he realizes, oh, I forgot my math book back at class, and so Johnny has to actually come back and run back to school in order to pick up his math book to do his homework. Okay, and over here we have schools over here, distance from school. This person was at home and they just decided that it was time to go to school and so they hopped in a car or maybe they rode a bike and they rode at a constant rate all the way until they arrived at the school. Okay, just make them some stories. You can make up your own, but you need to write them out so your teacher can see what you're thinking. That's it. We'll see you. Have a great day.